Hey, good afternoon. Lock Doc back here with another shimming guide. Today we're going to be talking about mortise cylinders. You can always tell a mortise cylinder because they have the threads back here uh, to thread into a mortise case. Uh, another thing to note that tailpiece is is important to whatever lock that's going into it. Some aluminum storefront locks have a different style where it's like half the length. Then you have other mortise locks that have like a clover leaf or what people call like a beaver tail where it's wide like that. The clover leaf cam looks something like so. The standard sergeant one is this offset type that you're seeing right here. Uh, first step in the whole process, get a flathead screwdriver and remove those two screws right there. One thing that I feel is worth mentioning is that Sargent is pretty unique in their cylinders, meaning that these tail pieces that they have on the back won't work with, say, like a Ilco mortise cylinder. Um, they actually have different dimensions down here in the barrel. So, anyways, two screws are off, tail piece pops off. Alright, so just like shim in any other lock, you want to put the shim up here between the top of the barrel and the top of this housing right there. Kind of similar to such. Alright, so take our trusted handy dandy LA Keyway Key Blank, insert it all the way in the cylinder, and then we just start working our magic. Remember, just pull it back just a little bit. Less is more in this case. Let's see if we can get a good handle on it here. Whoop, heard it. Key indication that you're doing you're on the right move is you'll hear the pin drop. And then if you slightly back this off, you should be able to push this in a little bit, alleviating some of that top pressure. So pretty much you're just going back and forth. Whoop, heard something. Now, I'm kind of encountering a little bit of issue here, but the thing you got to make note of is sometimes it doesn't, you know, go as smooth as you want. So what you want to end up doing is kind of pulling this piece out just like an eighth of an inch, not much, giving you space to put this in just a little bit more and just kind of reset and go back a pin position. Um, simple things that can do it is, you know, maybe your shim has a little bend in it or something silly like that. Although I will be the first to admit there are some cylinders where you could sit here for hours trying to shim it and just nothing will work. Oh, there we go, we've got some movement. Uh, another thing, if I had a vise right here holding it, uh, another cool thing to do is kind of twist this back and forth while you slowly pull the key out. Uh, that helps free up the pins uh, in case you got like the pins are greased up or you know there's a lot of oil in there or something to that extent. I know I'm nearing the last pin so Usually you can just kind of pull the key out a little bit and just do a little wiggle wiggle with it and eventually you'll get it to turn and spin. Alright, so back to get our handy dandy follower. Take that, push it on through, and voila. Now we can key it and go about our merry way. Hey, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Any comments, questions, leave them below.
Thanks again. Bye-bye.